Somos sempre de uma gente de Roma. It's been half a year since we haven't seen each other, so I want to ask you, are, how is your health? Are you in good health? Praise the Lord. I now have 96 years old of age and Thank the Lord, my health is good. We don't, have, we don't know how, many, how much time we have, but now we would like to share about Paul's main burden. I would like to share the feeling I have about the revelation and the words God has given us. And in the past, we were helped by Brother Lee in Anaheim, and we know that Galatians talks about religion and the insatisfaction with religion. He had a very strong reaction concerning religion in Galatians because of the persecution religion caused in the past. He, Brother Lee, always shared with us that the main subject, burden in Galatians is Christ versus religion. And he shared a lot about this because he suffered a lot with the persecution of religion. But praise the Lord. Now, the Lord, when he revealed us his word, he gave us many revelations. We can see in the 14 epistles of Paul what is the central idea, what is the main burden in him, in Paul. And when we, when we talk about this burden, we see the importance of the book of Galatians. We know, according to what we shared with the saints already, that Galatians is the fuselage of the plane, and we have other two books which are the wings. One wing is Ephesians, and the other wing is the book of Colossians. And the runway for the plane to take off is a different runway than the ones that exist.
We will speak about this later on with more details and more details, but we can say that this runway is the book of Philemon. And we also need to determine the destination of this plane. The book of Philippians says that we should forget those things which are behind and reach forward to those things which are ahead, which is the goal. And we were very encouraged by this. You can see, in this plane we have the fuselage and the two wings. And way ahead in our goal, our target, we have Christ calling us. You should forget the things which are behind. You should not keep looking right or left. You need to look to the goal, to the target. If you walk in a bridge that those small suspension bridges and when you walk you can feel it wobble and if you look to the sides you wobble even more. What is the secret? You walk quickly advancing until you reach your goal. And we are speaking about the book of Galatians. We have the cabin, which is the book of Galatians. And then we have a wing, which is Colossians, and another wing is Ephesians. And after Galatians, we have Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, and Philemon. We can say that these books form the heart of this revelation. Of course, Paul also wrote other books. First comes Romans. He wanted to present the Lord. So he, re he received a burden of presenting the Lord to people. after we have 1st and 2nd Corinthians. He was already in Europe. And once they had believed in the Lord, Paul showed them what they had to keep. Then we have 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And all these epistles were according to the need of each church. 
And we consider the book of Galatians as the central burden, the main burden. If Galatians is, is this center, this main burden, then after Galatians we have two other important books, which are after Galatians, what do we have? Which books do we have after Galatians? You should have a deep impression concerning this. Here we have Ephesians and Colossians, these two important books. Without the two wings, we cannot advance, we cannot fly. We can see that these two books, first Galatians, then Ephesians and Colossians, have a deep meaning. In Colossians, we know that he preaches us the gospel, faith, love, hope. This burden of the gospel is something that I have very strong in me. I don't know when is the moment for me to promote this, but I hope that all the saints can receive this burden. Because the publisher also has this burden of producing leaflets, gospel leaflets, for preaching the gospel. I don't know if in this afternoon everything will be ready. Because our burden is to take the gospel to people. The book of Romans presents us the gospel. And connected to the gospel also we have 1st and 2nd Corinthians and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. Why? Because the door for the gospel was open in Europe. But when we reach the heart of the revelation, we are talking about the gospel, the book of Galatians. It's been about three years we've been sharing about this. We spoke about Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. We have shared about this. And how do we advance? Because Philippians shows us that we should advance toward our goal, press toward the goal, not looking to our sides, but we should look to the goal. If you look 
to the left or to the right, you'll see many problems. Praise the Lord. And saints, when we go back to the book of Ephesians, you can see that Galatians, I'm sorry. When we look at the book of Galatians, you can see that there you have the main burden of Paul. Of course, when we talk about Galatians and the two wings, which is Ephesians and Colossians, and the direction, which is Philippians, and the runway, which is Philemon. And you know that I have spoken recently about the importance of this runway. If a plane lands in a normal road, the plane will sink. You know that this runway is love. That is why we need love. There was a person called Onesimus. He was a slave. He did not have freedom. And of course, a slave does not have an easy life. He has a hard life. And we believe that Onesimus probably has had stolen money from his master and ran away. The slave could not leave the limits established by his master. But Onesimus probably got money or something valuable from his master. And maybe because he was a slave, he didn't know how to handle so much money. But the matter is that when he was in Rome, he didn't have anything else. Maybe he was hungry. Paul was there because he had appealed to Caesar. So Paul was in Rome because he had appealed to Caesar. And there was a need of going through many places through the Mediterranean Sea. Many times there were many storms, many waves. Look at Paul's experience. He says that he was in the middle of a storm, and because of this great storm, people had to lighten the ship, throwing away all the cargo. This ship was going to Rome, and Paul was in this ship. But he was in a position of prisoner, in a very low position. And I believe that he was being held at the worst place of the ship, held in the pl worst place of the ship. 
Nós então sabemos que o barco estava ali à mercê da tempestade, as ondas jogando o barco. And we know that the ship was being tossed around by the waves. Paul also says that he spent, he was in many shipwrecks and he spent three days at sea. And probably because of experiences like these, Mark in the first journey went home, abandoned the journey. What I mean is that in the Mediterranean Sea there were many storms like these. And Paul to go to Rome, he had to go through the Mediterranean Sea. So the boat was being tossed from one side to another by the waves. And because the passengers were afraid of going through a shipwreck, they lightened the ship by throwing away all the cargo. And Paul was in this boat as a prisoner, meaning that he had the lowest position in that ship. But in the middle of this situation, we know that he stood up and he told people he spoke to them and what happened after they went through the storm and even in the midst of the storm, he was able to impose his authority. He had the lowest position in the ship. But he began to give orders in the ship as if he were a king. And after the shipwreck, they ended up in an island, and the people, the inhabitants of that island, received them. And of course, there there was not the uh, sh uh, the Shifu restaurant where there was good food. So we know that in the island people were cold, so they gathered sticks together and lit a fire and then a viper came out bit Paul's hand but Paul shook the viper away and the creature left everybody expected him to die but he did not there was a poisonous snake, a viper, 
which bit Paul, but nothing happened to Paul. But then, of course, the inhabitants of the island said that he was a god and he became someone extremely important. This was part of his journey to Rome. And when he arrived at Rome, many have a concept that he was put into a prison. No, he had appealed to Caesar. He was defending himself from these accusations. He hadn't been condemned yet. He didn't have to go to a prison. So he rented the house. And there he would preach the gospel. Of course, Rome being the capital of the empire was the most important city. And there were many soldiers in the street. Paul was living in the house which he rented and there he would preach the gospel and he would preach the gospel to the people he would meet and the result was that many people got saved And because of the gospel preaching, many were saved, and because of that, the empire tried to restrain the preaching of the gospel. And Paul preached the gospel to many people and many got saved and the Bible mentions one of them which is Onesimus Onesimus was a slave of Philemon who was one of the elders in Colossae and of course, who has slaves has many possessions. And the slave did not know much and there was this slave called Onesimus. He probably stole something from Philemon and ran away. Then what happened? He spent this money. I'm not saying that he spent this money slowly, but I think I imagine that he spent this money quickly. He had lots of money, so he wanted to spend it quickly. Probably he spent a lot of money because he did not know how to administer it and he got hungry but then by the gospel preaching of Paul he gospel, uh, 
Paul preached the gospel to on Onesimus and took care of Onesimus. He probably spoke a lot to him. He preached the gospel many times to Onesimus. And then Onesimus became Paul's helper. He must have preached the gospel together with Paul. Look, before there was a slave that did not know, did not know much, did not know anything. That is why I say that the book of Philemon is as this runway. You know that for you to build a runway in an airport, you need a lot of work because this runway needs to be resistant to impact. What do they do usually? They usually remove that earth, that dirt, which is in the soil. They dig two or three meters under. They remove that dirt. So I want to apply this to our life. In us, we have many natural things. If we want to be used by God as a runway, we also need to dig these things up from our inner being. Maybe you have to dig one cubic meter, two cubic meters, or three cubic meters of dirt or even dig three meters down to remove all that natural life and then you'll put rocks to make a firm soil and then we have the foundation the foundation of iron and concrete cement you see for this is for this runway to be full of love can you be a runway for the Lord or not If you do not allow the Lord to remove this natural dirt that is in you, when the plane lands, the plane will sink. Dear saints, for the plane there might not even be much problem, but the problem is the runway. How much love is necessary? And then we see Onesimus. This Onesimus in the beginning was like this common dirt. But when he was being worked on, this natural dirt was removed and then an adequate soil was added rocks cement a foundation and then we can see layer after layer so dear saints how much time we need to spend how much love needs to be applied we are like this we have many natural things. These natural things need to be removed. So that we may become useful to the Lord. So, dear saints, 
mais ou menos a coisa. E aí, voltando ao livro de Gálatas, vimos que a parte... When we go back to the book of Galatians, we see that the cabin of the plane is the most important part. And then we have the two wings to give lift to the plane, which are these two books, which are the two wings, Ephesians and Colossians. And then the plane can advance, and the goal the destination, we need a runway, lots of love for the plane to take off. Once the runway is ready, the plane can take off. And we have a goal, a destination. The Lord is ahead of us, calling us. And then we see the result. You know how to advance. You know that if you want to advance, you need to forget the things which are behind. Many times when you, when you think about the things which are behind, the problems through which you went to through, you will be afraid of advancing, but forget the things which are behind and reach forward, advance to those things which are ahead. You should look towards the goal. Why? Because the runway is ready. Now you need to advance. You need to run. You need to gain velocity, gain speed to take off. Praise the Lord. So we consider that among all the books Paul wrote, Galatians is probably the most important. Why? Because it is the cabin of the plane. But just the cabin, just the fuselage, is not enough to take off. So then we see the two wings. First is Colossians. The mystery of God is Christ. And Ephesians 3 says, what does it say? You probably have seen this already. That the mystery of Christ is the church. So it also talks about the dimensions of Christ. Ephesians and Colossians are these two wings of the plane. And Colossians gives an emphasis in the gospel. We need faith, love, and hope. We need to reach God's will. Colossians shows us this. And the book of Ephesians. First, in Ephesians 1, we have the base of this economy, and after, in chapter 2, we have the material which is used for this work, 
And then, in the next chapters, we have the wonderful church life. And even though we have many difficulties, we can experience, experiment, experience Christ. So we need to see how important it is for us to have this goal and this runway. Amen? So this is my word. I am helping the saints to be impressed by this image, this figure. Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. There are many experiences. In Rome, look, Rome is such an important city. And after we have seen Romans, which talks about this gospel, then we see, we see Galatians, which has the main burden of Paul. Why is it the main burden? We will speak about this tonight. Amen? Very well. Now you can stand up and share in small groups. Then we will continue this word in the evening. Amen? You can stand up and share in small groups.